Well, in last week's show, I mentioned the Big C Choir and I promised to try and get an interview with one of the members. On the telephone with me is choir member Chrissy Smith. Hello, Chrissy. Hi, Fred. Hi. Hi. Hiya. Well, thank you for joining us, Chrissy. Can you tell me how the choir was formed? Right. Well, as I, um, I'm a nurse working at the Royal Brent Hospital. I'm a research nurse and I look after the lung cancer patients. And I had an email from 10 of us that had been sort of cascaded down through the system and asking if any of my patients would be interested in joining the choir. Um, they were doing a little bit of research and wanted to see what the effects of singing would have on people who are having treatment for um, right, cancer. Yeah. So I had a, a long think, and, and none of my patients really were very well, and I didn't really think they'd be suitable. And right. um, on third line treatment myself for breast cancer, diagnosed in 2006, and I've had uh, this is my third reoccurrence in February this year. So although I'm on medication, I'm on tablets, I don't lose my hair. Um, I was able to work, which has been fantastic for me to be able yeah, to focus. Yeah, quite therapeutic, I should imagine, yeah. So I thought, well, I love singing. I sing in church, I sing at home, I sing in the car. I love singing. I don't have any good. So I rang them up and it sort of started from there. They said, yes, we'd love you to come along. So I went along and uh, that's it. <laughs> and you've been going on ever since, yeah. So it's, it must have been a pretty amazing year for you. What have you been up to? Oh, my gosh. It sort of started off very slowly. What they did was they drip-fed us, really. They gave us a little bit at a time, and they said, there will be a concert at the end. We'll have some inspiring, ins- inspirational people coming to visit us, and da 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 <laughs> And um, so as we started singing, they, they worked as... Uh, there was 35 of us, and they sort of... The, the, um, the choir mistress, Kat Southall, um, just went round and listened to us all and, and decided that I was a tenor, not tenor, no, I was an alto. Alto. And then um, we all got broken up into our group. And I'm telling you, from the second week, we used to try, we used to um, rehearse every Thursday for two hours. And by the second week, we were singing. Oh, it was fab. absolutely amazing. And individually, we're not brilliant singers, but together, collectively, and with the different tenors and altos and sopranos, amazing. Oh, fab. You had a special guest uh, come to mentor you, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Um, we had um, Russell Watson. Russell Watson's had a brain tumour himself, and he's um, it's recurred three times, and he's on treatment now for it. And uh, he he was very interested, and he came along uh, to Flandaff to the uh, church hall, and um, came in, and he had a chat with us. We were all very excited. He sang with us. He listened to us sing, and then we sang for him, and he sang with us as well. And then at the end, he said, then he was telling us all about his different where he travels around the world in his favourite places. And he said he's singing in the Albert Hall and he'd like to invite us to sing with him. So we were just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So that was really what, what our aim was, to get good enough to sing at the Albert Hall. And we had a couple of little gigs in between then, um, one at Flandaff Cathedral and one, um, we did like a flash mob thing in um, Giovanni's restaurant in Cardiff. Oh, right, yes, yes. Did you I, see that? I saw, the, I saw that on the documentary, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was our first gig, and it went really well, and it just gave us the confidence to go on. So when you sang in the uh, Albert Hall, that must have been uh, pretty special. It was surreal. It was surreal. We were in the dressing room. Russell Watson came to meet us at the hotel and came on the bus with us, and we were taken down into the belly of um, the Albert Hall in, in the dressing rooms with a, a door with a choir on it. And inside was lots of refreshments and things like that. We could get ready. There were showers and everything. And then we went up and we had a sound check. And I mean, my husband's a big music fan, and he knew a lot of the people that were there. These are just uh, I wasn't quite sure who who people were, but um, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, all right, yeah, um, and Brian May. Uh, Alice Cooper, they were all doing their sound checks as well. Oh my God, you saw everybody. <laughs> yeah, and they were playing behind us as well. So um, oh, we, fantastic. Sang, we sang and uh, did our bit of a rehearsal. And uh, Russell Watson said, if you sing like that tonight, you will lift the roof off. And we did. Absolutely <laughs> we brilliant. We had a standing ovation. It was five and a half thousand people there. And we had a standing ovation. It was amazing. Absolutely. My family were out there. My friends were out there. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, great stuff. So <laughs> you did the uh, Stand Up to Cancer as well with uh, Channel 4. They yeah. had the telethon, didn't they? And uh, you did some backing singing for... Viola Lewis. Absolutely brilliant. What we was that like? Run, we sang Run, uh, the last eight lines of Run by Snow Patrol. And I didn't realise, we were told that the song Snow Patrol was written by the um, 
the lead singer went up he'd fallen down a set of concrete steps and he thought he was going to die so it was quite sort of poignant yeah. you know the words of it are quite poignant so it was absolutely amazing not very glamorous the um, being a celebrity though there's a lot of hanging around waiting around and there's lots of nice things but there's a lot of hanging around and that's all that's, yeah, that's the thing and yeah but and a lot of people in the choir aren't well some of them are still on treatment some that's of them are some of them are terminal, some of them are actually dying, and yeah. you know, they made themselves, the one chap, um, and I mean, it, it, it's quite open, he, he was discharged from hospital on the Wednesday, and he was in our coach on the Thursday, <laughs> and he made it. Well, the thing, I suppose he's, uh, he, he wanted to be there, he, it's once in a lifetime thing, so... And the doctor said to, said to him, no, we don't think it's a good idea to go, and he said, no, nope, I'm going. I don't blame him. And I don't he blame loved him at all. It. He loved it, and we loved him being there. It was really nice. So, when you did the uh, rehearsals, did you have logistical nightmares because of you know members missing uh, practice because of treatment and things? Nope. We've always been because there's thirty two to thirty five of us. There's always been enough. I mean, sometimes we haven't had. Um, there's some key members that haven't been there, but we've just managed without them. And we know that we're not always going to be there, you know, we're not always going to be there at the same time. So, um, no, we didn't have any. And, I mean, our, our rehearsals, we we tended to do rehearsals, and if we were in um, just practising, we sounded terrible, and I was just like, oh, my gosh. But when it came to it, and we had to sing, and we had to come up with the goods, we sang. Yeah. It was as if there was this force... Pushing you. Lifting us and bringing us along. It was like, yeah. we're going to do this. And we did, yeah. Fantastic. So what what's happening with the choir now that uh, all the uh, the celebrity stuff has, uh, has subsided? Well, we want, we, we, we're going to have a meeting next week um, to decide what the future is of the choir. We want to keep the choir going. Um, we've got a couple of gigs. <laughs> we've got a couple of gigs uh, set up at the moment. There's one um, in Landaff Cathedral in November, right. and it's a ten of us choir that we have every year, and it's a love song, and I think there's Chiocchi male voice choir is singing, and, and the Big C are going to be singing one song at that. Right. And then I've, I've uh, arranged for them to come to I work for Nishka, which is a research um, company, department, whatever I can't think of the word. Um, and we've got a symposium in Cardiff for two days in November. And I thought, because it's all cancer staff that are going to be there, consultants, um, patient, R&D, lots of different people are going to be there. And we thought, wouldn't it be a good idea to have a choir there to sing just to open up the symposium? So oh. we've agreed to suggest we'd love that. That'd be great. So it's just things like that, really. We, we would love, we would love to get um, a single out of this while the, you know strike while the iron's hot because then um, we are desperate to make money for ten of us because we are ten of us choir yes. and ten of us are hoping to raise money to um to buy a, a new ten of us chemo bus that goes around the community and it takes the strain off the hospitals then patients can go to the bus and i think it's, they take six to eight patients and and they can go there and have the treatment it takes the the strain off the hospital and also you're less likely to get infection because you're not coming into a you know, busy hospital. Right. So that's our big aim, is just to make some money for, for 10 of us. So how can uh, anybody find out about, uh, more about the choir even, and uh, 10 of us? Go on to 10 of us's website. There are addresses and email addresses there. Um, and they can, they can email whoever's on the website and uh, ask them and, and they'll be able to tell you. So that's uh, www. Tenevers.org.uk. Yeah. Well, thanks, Chrissy. I hope Thank the choir you. goes from strength to strength. I hope so too. And I'll speak to you soon. Yes. Thanks very much for, for taking your time and for speaking to me. Well, thanks. Thanks Take for care, that. Take All right. care, Fred. Thank Cheer, you. Cheers, Chrissy. Cheers. Bye bye.